joining me now is Adam McAlvey, who does such a wonderful job covering the Milwaukee Brewers on a daily basis. And Adam, I know they've dropped their last couple of games, but this is a Brewers team that continues to be strong year in and year out. It seems to be a two horse race in the central. What has impressed you most about this team halfway through the season? Well, probably there's a lot of teams, Alana, that can say this, but it's overcoming some injuries. Uh, they've seen four of their six regular starting pitchers go on the injured list. And look, when you came out, Alana, to uh, American Family Fields of Phoenix in spring training, you talked to all those pitchers because they knew that it was going to be the strength of the team. So to lose uh, players like Brandon Woodruff and Freddie Peralta in particular, two horses of the rotation, Peralta is out for an extended stint, but Woodruff is now back. That's a big blow for a team, and they've been able to navigate that and overcome it. And as you said, kind of keep pace. It looks like Brewers and Cardinals in the National League Central are the two teams that are going to go down to the end. So they're getting a little healthier now in that rotation. And I think the aim of this Brewers team is to get to the All-Star break in a good spot health-wise, give everybody a breather, and then come back and compete. Brandon Woodruff pointed out that they're a very good second-half team, something I think they have the third-best winning percentage in the NL during the Christian Yelich era, so the last five years. They're usually a, a pretty good closing team. One run in 11 innings. That's all that Brandon Woodruff has given up since his return from the IL. This is a team, as you mentioned, predicated on pitching. Their strength is pitching. What does Antanasio, Craig Council, everybody else there do at the deadline to uh, kind of boost them up going into the second half? Yeah, look, uh, Alana, we always talk about this in early July, and then they never do what you think they're going to do. They always have some unique move. And I think back to, you know, when they needed a bat a couple of years ago, they brought in Mike Moustakas and put him at second base, which no one saw coming. So I, I predict probably something that surprises all of us. If you look on paper, you know, center field is a position. Lorenzo Cain uh, was cut loose last month. And they're at the bottom of the league in production out of center field. So maybe like a, a center field platoon mate for Tyrone Taylor, a younger right-handed hitting player, uh, maybe a, a bullpen arm, although they had kind of poor luck with that at the deadline last year. I don't know that this is a team that's going to make a giant splash at the deadline and get like a big name player, which only guarantees that they're going to go out and get like Nelson Cruz or a big name player because <laughs> they never, ever, ever do what you, what you expect they're going to do. This is a team, of course, that we talk about the pitching all of the time. But offensively, Adam, they've been performing well. If you take a look at what they've done um, in terms of their bats, they have been hitting almost six runs a game, 5.52 runs per game. They're second behind the Astros. They've hit 36 home runs, which trails only the Yankees and the Astros. That's pretty good company. Yeah, the criticism here is that they're not good at situational hitting. They lost a game to the Cubs a couple of days ago because they couldn't get a runner in from third uh, with, with one out. Um, but look, that's baseball right now. This is a home run sport at this time because the pitching is so good, it's hard to string together six hits in an inning, as Craig Council often says. So they're a team that is fueled by the home run. I'll tell you one big change, two big changes lately. One, Andrew McCutcheon has gotten going. And he was uh, the bat that they brought in in spring training to especially hit left-handed pitching. And he has produced over the last several weeks, which is a very good sign. The other really good sign is Christian Yelich. He got moved into leadoff spot when Colton Wong went down with an injury. And it's been about a month now, and, and Yelich is on bases over 400. He's not hitting the home runs. Like, you know, they really, when you sign that contract, you expected probably a ton of home runs, but he's become a really, really good leadoff hitter for this team. And he is so good on the bases in terms of speed and just having incredible instincts on the base pass that he has created some runs with his legs. And I think that's a positive. Now, would they rather he go out and hit like 40 homers? Well, sure. But at this time, he's, he's helping them in other ways. And that's really uh, been a big thing for this offense to score some runs because they're the kind of team you get a lead by the sixth inning. They're in pretty good shape with uh, Josh Hader and company and, and Devin Williams at the back end. Yeah, you don't have to worry about Christian Yelich hitting home runs, Adam, because Rowdy Telez is hitting home runs. He's sitting all yeah. kinds of extra base hits, and he is a blast. I love watching this guy. Great personality. What have you learned from him? Well, 
he, he has a really interesting take on the game. He, he wears the bad games hard. Some players are able to really just shrug it off, and that's it. Rowdy wears the offers very hard, um, and I think it means that when he does have a good game, he really <laughs> enjoys it. I mean, this guy's a brewer, right, Alana? Look at him. Um, you hear the rowdy, rowdy chants in the stands. I mean, this is a city that loves these kind of, I don't want to call him a cult hero because that does a disservice to like the great production he's giving them. He's, he's more than a cult hero. He's been their offensive leader this year, but, but he also has kind of that like good Milwaukee vibe to him. He's a, he's a good, a guy that the fans are really getting into. And, you know, I think he takes that seriously. There was a game a couple of weeks ago where a young fan drove all the way down with his family from Ontario because he was so devastated when the Blue Jays traded Rowdy. So they came and visited for this kid's fifth birthday. And Rowdy gave him a meeting and a signed jersey and spent some time with him and just made this kid's entire year. So that's that's the kind of guy Rowdy Telez is. Yeah, he is a relatable player, a guy that's easy to cheer for. The Milwaukee Brewers go as Josh Hader goes at him, and he has struggled in his last 10 games, a 4-5-0 earned run average. He's now up to, or I should say down up to 163, which is still unbelievably respectable. But what's <laughs> what needs to change? What have you noticed? Well, I think the Brewers would say change nothing, be Josh Hader. Uh, keep doing you. I think this is a tough time of year for relievers. If you look at Josh Hader's history, last year there was a, a little blip like this, a couple of games where he gave up some runs right before the All-Star break. It's a time where these guys have been worked hard. Uh, he's been available uh, every time they've needed him. And it's probably time where that All-Star break is going, going to be beneficial. You know, unfortunately, he's like a stone-cold lock for the All-Star game. So that's uh, sort of in the good problem to have category, but he's probably going to be going out to LA for a couple of days, but he still will get a break. And I think it's a probably a, a good time for a break. And, you know, he's going to give up some runs. And I think uh, the, the fans here are spoiled with Devin Williams and Josh Hader because the numbers are so cartoonish over the last uh, couple of years that when they do give up runs, it stands out. But I, I'm pretty sure the Brewers will tell Josh Hader to just keep doing what he's doing. Yeah, no question about it. Devin Williams, a .94 earned run average in his last 31 appearances. Okay, Adam, so coming <laughs> up on High Heat, Ray Romano is joining the show. So I need to know, are you funny? Do you have any jokes? How can you compete with Everybody Loves Raymond? Oh, geez. Well, I can't. I can't possibly. <laughs> Plus, you can't be funny in Milwaukee because Bob Euchre is always standing next to you, so you're always the second funniest guy in the room, even if you're that hilarious. That is 100% true. That is 100% true. Maybe we could get Euchre and Romano in a room together. Adam McCalvey, thanks oh, so much for great. taking a few moments to be with us. We really appreciate it.